Actually, for recording all this, I did all the recording. So next time, if people want to study by themselves, it will be helpful for them. Okay. I'll... All right. So we will go through the Bali Maisy. Look at it first. So lesson 15. All right. So past participle, I would say, is very, very important in the Bali in the sutta. So it's good even if you have learned in your intermediate class, some of you, some of you like uh, Vira and Jenny, it's good you all do the revision again. All right. So I have copied some of the notes here. Okay. And then later we will do the analysis of the, all the, this is a verb here. Okay, so before that, we do a quick review. All right, so we already finished the present tense, lesson one, with the T and D Sita Mima, and then Elris, lesson eight, future then with the, for example, all these like uh, Gachisa, optative will be like Gachi, Eya, okay, Eya, Eyum, imperative with the Gachatu, Tu and Tu, all right, and then Jaron, Infinity. Gantum, okay, infinity. Gantua, all right. Now, past participle will start with this one, like G-A-T-A, okay? You will see this form later, okay? Now, past participle, lesson 15 of the Bali Maisy, I just do it PME, Bali Maisy, which is the standard book used for this Agachala. All right. Now, two suffixes, ta and na, can be added to the verbal base or root. Some roots ending in d and r take the na suffix. For example, okay, now you see, I think you see in one of the lesson, patati is like somebody fall down or tree fall down. The root will be pat, all right? So, plus a and d. That is the Present tense. Now, if you want to do PP, we call it past participle, short form, we call it PP, all right? Now, what you do is take the root part and then the ita. So this means that it can be ita. When we write like this, I with the bracket, it means that it can be ita or ta. Okay, so pat plus ita, so patita. Patita means we put the e n here fallen. So patati present tense patita fallen. This is ending with t. But let's say if it's ending with d or r, like bit and na. B and na, so become bin na. Okay. So here, what we do is, if you want to understand the change, you put the, this one. D and N, we call it assimilated. All right. Is assimilated. Uh, one M. Two and N. All right. So bin na, broken. So this means that it can be ita. Okay, or inna. So sometimes you also can put like I and A. Here will become inna or just na. So optional, this means that the I is optional. Ita or ta, inna or na suffix. Here, happen that you put two, you put the na here. So na bit plus na become bin na. This one, this one is another special one. Scatter, right? Okay, let's look at the present then. Binati. It will be B. Uh, I think plus the should be M, yeah. Plus R and T. Okay. This one is Kirati. This is very easy. K plus R and T. So present then is scatters. So past participle is key because this is ending with R. So you cannot put the ta, you have to put the R because the rule is D and R take the na suffix. So key and na plus together. 
So we can write like this R and N, change it to an N. So kidnap and because of the the grammar rule here, here. Due to R, due to this R, so the dental N, we call it the dental N become the lingual N. So it become N dot, right? So this is why KI, so I just, kinna, because of R, become kinna. So it, we call it lingual, right? So this is the same changes here. And next one is also upaya. Upaya, if you combine, you got the verbal base of upaja. Upaja plus ita. So in this case, you you still have to delete the, this a first. We just delete the a. And then plus the ita. So upajita. So Horizon, you put the E N here, horizon or bone. So the present tense will be Upa Pajati. Okay. So it's very easy. If you see the present tense and past participle, this is a PP here. The difference is present tense, you drop the T I and then you the A you minus and you plus eta. Okay, so far here, any question up to this point from the student, basic student, especially? Yes, I, G, I want to ask about the one, uh, the one, the go one. Go how you form it in PP? Which one? Come, come. Go. G-O, go. G O go. Where is G O go? Use the the gachati. Uh, ga, yeah, gachati. Oh, okay. You mean gachati? Okay, gachati. Okay, you you all know the meaning. What's the meaning of gachati? Okay, gachati means goes oh. right. He or she goes. Okay, now the root is actually gum. Okay, gum change it to ga. Then you plus the r and t, so you go the Gachati. That is a present tense, all right? This is a present tense. But for past participle, we take the gum plus the ta, okay? And then we delete the m, okay? We delete the m. So it become gata, all right? You see this in the sentence like ta, ta, ga, ta, all right? Who is ta, ta, ga, ta? Task gone. Okay, sometimes they call it task come. The Buddha. Uh, okay. Show more. We don't deal, we don't change from ga. G A C C H is a secondary. The first one is gum. The root is actually gum. So actually in Bali, beside the gachati, we also have another one is gamati. Also same. Present tense. Okay, so for future tense will be, let's say for future tense, you will be gachi sati or kami sati. But the past participle, we write pp, is still kata. Okay? Okay, thank you, Saiji. All right, okay. So the key point here is you have to remember the very first rule here, all right? <clears throat> this is the sometimes it's very important for you to remember the first rule. You also check if you check the Palimate Easy Book, you also stated this is the very first line and it's the very important rule. Okay. This one. When do you put the ta? Okay. When do you put the na? Okay. Or you can refer to my note again. There are actually only two suffixes, ta and na. All right, added to verbal base or root. So those ending with D and R, like this one D, okay, or R here, 
take the not suffix. The other one take the ta suffix. So only remember D and R. Okay, so I'll highlight D is the this one. R is for example this one. Okay. You take the not suffix. Okay, Shumoy? Yes, all right. Okay, so if no question, I'll continue. So this, this is the first Andy, rule that you're... Andy, yes, uh, uh, one question. To, uh, so for, uh, for the if, yes? for the uh, first, uh, ita and ta, when do I use the ita and when do I use ta? Okay, so you have to see the example given like this, okay? So, for example... Okay, in this case, you can see ita is added, okay? For example, in this case, here ta is added. This one is ita is added, okay? So this means that from the cases for the example shown, no, this one BADH plus ta. This one BADH plus ita, okay? That's one of the things. Maybe if this is not clear, you can look at this example also. This is, oh, okay. This is the, yeah, this one, ita is here. Okay. Later we come here, we will come down, we will come back for this, we call it the verb formation. Because in your sutta, you all need to know the verb formation, all right? So basically you see the example here, you, you find the answer. Some have less, for example, some have one answer, some have two answers. All these are very easy. For example, this one, you only got the ta. Because han plus ta only, there's no ita here. Okay. But this one, it has the ita. So when it has the ita, it has ta and ita. All right. So Chiwon, the answer is look at the example. All right. Okay. You have this book, right, Chiwon? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, this is a all very good question also. Okay. So just have to, for, for me, when I take my exam, I have to memorize everything. That's all. All right. So you can see simple example, gum, ka. All right. So gum is always have to, gum, ka. So you go kachati, gamati. We seldom see this, but actually this exists also in the Tipitaka. So now we have this kachisati or gamisati for the future tense. So this is a future tense. So. Okay, now, now we go through some of the example, all right? Because when you see in the Pali it actually show you a lot of example here, all right? Okay, all this example, okay. I actually copy from here, all this example. I will explain, because when my teacher, he taught this chapter, he actually show us his own notes. Because if you follow Pali Meizi, you only get a little bit grammar only. Now, this is a second point, all right? Couldn't, uh, just now is the first point, so we take it as a second main point. So the earlier one is the, this is the first point, okay? Now, how do we use it in the sentence? So if you got active possibility and you got a passive possibility, okay, later I will explain more about this. So we look at some of the example easier for us to understand. Okay. Now look at this example. Okay, this is a very simple example. Puriso a gato. All right. So let's say if you are going to write in past then, okay, Aries form. So this is Aries. So let me show you in Aries. Aries means it's past then, yeah? So you remember it's it here. Okay, so this is past. A man came, all right? So is this means that this action has finished, totally finished. But if I'm going to put in this PP, all right, I put in PP, all right? So first, puriso agato, right? Okay, let me explain. How do we get this agato? Same, all right? So you got the a plus the gum 
and then plus the ta. Okay, so you got the agata. So you just minus the. All right, agata. All right. Now agata is not finished because puriso, puriso is nominative. Okay, nominative singular. So the agato must follow it. So it must be masculine nominative singular also. So this means that if you write like the original, we call it this is a we call it noun stem. Okay, noun stem means here maybe verb or noun, but you can take it as a noun. Maybe just take it as a very simple form. So if you're going to put buriso agata, all right. If I'm going to write like this. Exactly like this. It's not complete yet. So I must change it to O. Alright. Puriso. Like Budo. Masculine nominate singular. So I must change it to also O. Alright. So Puriso Agato. Alright. If Puriso. Agachi. So this refers to somebody came already. Finish already. But Puriso Agato, you can translate in three ways. All right. A man. Puriso is a man. Okay. A man, Agato, came, has come, or had come. All right. So three ways. Came, has come, had come. So if you look at the Bali easy, you'll find the example. Uh, okay. This one. All right. I copy here. A man came, a man has come, a man had come. All right. This example, page 35. So you can refer to this page here. All right. So remember, we can translate three way. Came, has come, had come. All right. So far, any problem with this sentence? Before I continue. All right. Because this is basic class, I will go slow. Any question? You know, I continue. Okay. Alright, so uh, Jumi, you understand already. So, Puriso Agato. Okay. So, if you're going to change it to, this is singular, okay? We're going to change it plural. So, you must be Purisa Agata. Or oh, it's also PP here. So, uh, means men. Came, had come, had come. Sorry, has come, have come, had come. Okay, can follow? If you have a question, you just, yes, Shumo, yeah. Uh, yes, I see. That means yes. uh, in 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 these sentences, wherever we form any PP, the mm -hmm. noun we have must agree with the GCN one now, mostly, right? Yeah, right, right, right. That's why we call it agree. It's like adjective. Remember last time we used the adjective? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, okay. So mm -hmm. that's why it actually, all right. So this is point number two, all right? The past body has to agree with the subject or object. So in this case, Puriso is a subject. In gender, masculine, num number is a singular and case. Okay. Nominative. So maybe put the case and number better. So this rule number two, it has to be agree. Okay. Now, all right. So assuming you all understand already. If no question, I'll continue, Excuse right? Me, Excuse me, can I ask? If, let's say yes. it is, it's not Puriso. If let's say it is Sanani, which is um N with I, and for nominative, you are not going to change. So the Agatha, Agatha will become... Uh, is Senani? Okay. Senani, uh -huh. Senani is a masculine uh -huh. nominative singular, right? Okay. So the Agatha... So, so it changed to... Then, Agatha still. Yes, because it must be masculine, nominative, oh. singular. All right. It, it changed to the O because the Agatha ends with A. 
So according to nominative singular, A is supposed to be O. If let's say the verb oh, is not Agatha, it ends with I, then it will be I. So it will remain as O. Oh, no, it won't be, right? It, 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 it's still, be yeah, let's say yeah. it's Senani. Yeah. Senani is long mm. I. But this mm. is a masculine nominative singular, uh, right? Understand. Then it should be follow the masculine, right? Understand. Okay. For example, Thank this you. example. So, Purisa is masculine nominative plural. So, mm. Agatha will be? Plural as well. Yeah, my screen, no okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay, let's look, look at this one. Okay, now, same, okay. Luca, Luca is a tree. So, patito. So, same. A tree. All right. Same, right? So, luco. Patito. How do we get the patito? All right. So patati is the present then. Okay, present then. Change it to pat plus ita. So you got the patita. Then it must be follow the nominal singular o o. Okay. So here means a or the tree. So maybe we can put a tree because we don't know what is the tree. Which tree? We just say a tree has fallen down, had fallen down, or fell down. So three ways we can translate. All right. Okay, now we look at feminine. All right, now just this is the feminine. Now, feminine for feminine is always long A. So this feminine, nominate singular, a girl. She came, has come, had come. Because this is long A, so you have to put long A. All right? Because this is feminine here. Okay? Assuming you, answer, uh, you all understand this already. So this is very simple. Just something that it, the key point it should follow is actually same like uh, adjective because adjective has to agree with the subject object in gender number case uh, gender case number so past participle we call it pp also must be similar so I think if it is combined with like I say the the neuter and the feminine just say the kaya and the jita how would it be yeah like why Them's then will be change it, all right? Let's say we call it chitam. Okay, let's find an example. The mai upa chitam. Okay, so the mai has a rose, has re, has arisen, had arisen. Okay, so here will be neuter nominatives. Singular. Neuter, nominative, singular. All right. So this is another example. So chitam upa chitam. Actually, when we recite, it also sound nice. So if you're going to recite chitam upa upa it, it not nice, okay? Because chitam upa chitam better than chitam upa chitto. So this is uh, incorrect one. So we just, all right. Hey, this chitta, chitta is the feminine or is a neuter? Chitta is neuter, nominate singular. Kaya, so nomin the body? Kaya is masculine. Oh, kaya is masculine. Oh, makes up. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Kayo, right? We have the kayo. Okay, now, okay, assume you are, let me continue the next one. Okay, the next one is, we're still talking about this one, all right? Now, the sentence is a little bit more getting longer. So, we call it active past participle, all right? Must agree with the subject in gender, number, and case. It's exactly like just now, okay? So, let me change. Case and number. Now, Puli so, this is a very simple statement. I think you find it also here. All 
Yeah, you find some way here. All right. Okay, never mind. Okay. Puriso Odanam Bunjito. Subject is Puriso, a man. Odanam is rice. Odanam means actually it's a cooked rice. It is the rice has been cooked. Yeah, cooked rice. So a man, rice. So a man is subject. Rice is object. So a man is a subject must be masculine, normally singular. Odanam must be masculine, acquisitive, singular. Right. Bunjito. Okay. So it's a verb here. In terms of English, it's a verb. It's Pali. It's a, it's also must be. So this bunjinto is must follow the puriso. Okay. So puriso is masculine nominate singular. So bunjinto pp must be masculine nominate singular. So a man at has eaten, had eaten rice. So you can write this. The man had eaten the rice, has eaten the rice, had eaten the rice. Okay, now how do we get this bunjito? From the word butch, okay, and then the plus m, okay, so change it to b h u n j plus the ita. This is a past, but it's a ita, so you got the bunjita. And then bunjita, because of o here, bunjito. So puriso bunjito. So if we write a very simple sentence, we can just Right, puriso bun bunjito. Okay, so you can say a man at right. So if you're going to write like this, it's very easy. The man at or has eaten had eaten, but like this, it's not complete because there's no object. That's why the object must be in acquisitive singular. All right. So the man has. Eaten, had eaten, or had eaten rice. So the main thing, puriso bunjito. Puriso odanam bunjito. Okay. All right. So if you're going to... Has another sentence here. Puriso odanam bunjito. But you put a hoti. Remember, hoti is a, from the word bu. Okay. Bu means to be. So it's a, and then you put the T here. So we got hoti. So it, this is a present tense itself, okay? Present tense, third person, singular. Because it's present tense, third person, singular. So you cannot put at. At is a past tense, you all know. Had eaten is a past, uh, how you call it? past perfect in English. So it can be only, here it should be only present perfect, okay? Not past ten. Not past perfect. Can follow so far? Okay. So sorry, sorry, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Just want to check. So it means every time when the so you call there is a PP, but mm -hmm. it ends with the forty. Mm -hmm. so it always reflect the present perfect. Yes, present perfect. Yeah, because hoti itself is a present tense, right? Mm. But sometimes I come across um a Pali sentence, uh, I mean end in hoti, but mm -hmm. if you translate as uh as present perfect, uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, then how? <laughs> okay, then uh I would say the first translation will be present perfect. Then you uh, you need to adjust according to the circumstances at that time. Maybe the sentence is in the past tense, so you, all everything, the whole paragraph is in the past tense, then you have to translate accordingly. Okay. Oh, okay. All so right. that means we, we use the alternative translation. Uh. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So has eaten. All right. So there's a... So the first one, we just start, okay, you just remember, like just now we learn, all right? So you start from this very simple sentence, okay? 
Start from this sentence, puriso punjinto. Then from puriso punjinto, you put it puriso odanam punjinto. So puriso, mas nominative, masculine nominative singular, punjinto is from the, this boot plus ita. Bujita become bujinto with the O. Also masculine nominative singular. So if you're going to draw an arrow, so uh, let me see. I'll draw an arrow. Okay, so if you're going to draw an arrow, you can you can just literally uh, you can just draw an arrow here, okay? So this means that this one all the way here. Or you can just uh, maybe uh, how we going to draw an arrow. Okay, you can just draw a, a arrow to show the connection between the bunjinto and puriso. This means that the bunjinto has agreed with the puriso in terms of gender, case, and number. Gender is masculine, case is nominative, singular is a number. Okay, so if no question, I will continue. Now, we are talking, this is a active sentence, all right? We call it active past participle. Why we call it active? Because this is in the sense of active, active sentence. So I hope you all remember your English why is active, why is passive. This is called active sentence, all right? So not passive. So this is called active sentence, all right? So this one will be, this bunjito will be considered as active PP. Now, this is a, another sentence, but it's actually same. We are doing, so we look at English first. Now, just now the man has eaten the rice. Okay, now the rice, was eaten, has been eaten, had been eaten by the man. It's same sentence, but the earlier one is active and this is called passive. So here we need to know what is passive PP. All right. So, okay, let's look at earlier sentence. All right. So you can see the sentence here. This one, compare this one and this one, all right? So let me highlight. Okay. Puriso odanam bunjito. Odano purisena bunjito. Okay. So we, we think about the logic here. Now, the subject, okay. The subject, eh, oh, we call it the agent here. The rice was eaten by the man. All right. The man will be the agent. Or maybe we don't use the word subject. Okay. It's an agent here. Okay. But the verb is also still same. Bunjito. Odano, the rice. Now the rice is object here. Like just now, it's same as object. Okay. But the rice here is become the masculine nominative singular, right? So just remember this is another important key point here. Okay, right. So the agent must be in instrumental case. Object must be in nominative case, all right? So object must be in nominative case. Agent must be instrumental. So Adano is the object in terms of English, but in Pali, it become masculine nominative singular. Right, just remember this red color. This is a key point here. Purisena is an agent here. So because it's an agent, means that by somebody. So you must use instrumental singular. Masculine instrument singular by the man. Bunjito is same like before, all right? So masculine normally singular. So the rice was eaten, had been eaten, has been eaten by the man. All right, so I give you a few minutes to digest. All right, because this deep, it is kind of like first you must think in the passive way, and then the grammar also different from the previous one. Okay, 
So if you see the Palimeji book, the Palimeji book actually show the example here with the ANA, the agent is placed in the instrumental case, all right? But it didn't mention much, all right? It just say agent is placed in instrumental case, that's all, like Purisena, right? By the man, Migo, the deer. So I will use this example later. The deer was seen Okay, by the man. The man is agent. That's why remember agent you must put in instrumental case because this is a passive sentence. All right. Wadena. This sentence is a little bit difficult. Wadena hatam. All right. So okay, we just look at my example first because the sentence given here there is much more difficult. All right. So puriso in eighty sense, the puriso here, I hope you can see my arrow. The puriso now become pulisena. All right, subject here become police and because it's agent by the man. By the man, of course, is an agent. So that's why you must use instrumental singular. And the rise here is object, is still object here, but in here it's become acquisitive. Here become nominative. Bunjito is also still bunjito, also nominative singular. Anyway, we will revise next week yeah, because it needs some time to think about it. So we can look at another example here. Luca. So we look at English first. Oh, this is a passive one. The trees, Luca is a trees, were cut, had been cut, had been cut by the man. So we, we just remember, by the man, Okay, by the man, it must be instrumental, right? So all these are very easy, masculine. So if, if you think in terms of English, by the man, it must be in, instrumental, poorer. So in terms of English, is an agent here, right? Okay. And then were cut, have been cut, have been cut, all right? So chinna, how do you get chinna? Sorry. Right. So you had chin plus chinna. All right. Become chinna. Now this is uh the suffix not because this is ending with d. All right. So pleasant then will be. So okay, pleasant then will be chinati. So pleasant will be chin. Nah, thick, right? So, the tree is object. Why? In terms of English, of course, it's object. It's an object being cut down. So, it's an object here. Here will be normally poorer. Okay, so it's a masculine here. Chinna also. Right? So, Luca. Masculine normally poorer. Chinna also masculine normally poorer. Cut down by the tree, all right? By the man. So the man is agent, instrumental, poorer. So everything poorer, poorer, poorer. Okay? So the key point is remember this one. Agent must be instrumental, okay? Object must be nominative. This is for the passive, all right? Passive sentence and for this passive past participle. Okay, so passive past participle with the active. All right, active is very different. All right, active past participle is very simple, just like the Aries past then. All right, but passive past participle, the key point is agent must be instrumental. All right, so like that, no? all right, by the man. So by the man instrumental. Object must be nominative, all right? So anyway, you all can just digest later. Okay, uh, if no question, I continue, all right? Now, sometimes in past participle, we also got few terms like with object, 
or without object. With object, we call it transitive. Means that the action is a, is a how we call it, uh, to do with the object. That's why it's transitive, right? So PP is passive. So it's actually like just now. Object, me go, the deer. So seen, was seen, has been has been seen or had been seen. Okay, by the man, all right, by the man. So by the man is a, so it's not, the, better don't use the subject, okay? So it's an agent here. So agent must be instrumentus singular. So Purisa is masculine, okay? Dear is also masculine. So the dicto, the dicto follow the migo. So this is a masculine nominal singular. So dicto also masculine nominal singular. So it follow. So no space. Okay. And how do you get this dicto? All right. So it's from the word this. This is to see. Plus the ta, right? Become a D I T T T T H A. Then change it to O because me go. Me go, dito, buri sena. Alright. So you can see this example. Okay, page uh, 33. Me go, dito, buri sena. The deal was seen, seen, alright. Can you follow so far? All right. Okay. This one is easier to understand. Okay. Chiwon, can you follow? Or who else? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So like, if come. Yes. Humor, yes. yes humor. Like, like, like you, as you make this sentence, uh, the Migo Dito Purisena, that means mm. the structure of it also, I can put it as Migo Purisena Dito. So, okay, it's not, not can, an issue. Can. Right? It's not oh, an issue. That means right. the structure is not, not so important. And most important is the agree. agree yeah, agree. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, main okay. thing is this Migo Dito Purisena is a complete sentence by itself. It's a passive sense. It's a passive sentence. It's not active one. All right, because you look at the English, the deal was seen, has been seen, had been seen by the man. So if you want to write me go, if you want to write the other way now, me go, buri se na, dito, also can. Or if you want to put, uh, put the buri se na, me go, dito, okay. So different way of how you ar uh, arrange it. So we call it out. out. Okay, thank you. So it makes sense to us because dicto is the uh here is still we call it active PP. All right. So dicto will be if you want to put the word active also can, but if you put PP is all also can, all right. Okay. Now this sentence is much more uh a little bit long. Okay, but we can see here aham basami. I saw a deer killed by the huntsman. All right. So previously we are saying that we are saying that the object, all right. So actually the object should be in nominative, right? So so let's say the original should be put it we are the na hato miko. So, so let, let's study this, this part first. So, by Hans Men killed right? 
dear, all right? So if you put like this, is uh, uh, dear uh, is was killed by a uh, Hans, Han, Hans man, right? That's how we say already, the agent, the agent here will be this agent. Agent must be in instrumental singular, okay? And then the object, object should be in the masculine nominative singular, all right? So the past participle, it should be same, all right? So this is a PPP. This is a passive one, okay? So it should be follow the Okay, ideally, this is, should be the this way, all right? So, agent, instrumental, object is nominative, all right? Like just now. Okay, agent is instrumental, object is nominative, all right? Okay. Now, this is one sentence by itself, okay? So, we call it the sentence number one, okay? But if you are going to combine with another sentence, I saw a deer, a deer killed by a huntsman. Actually, if you look at it, this is a, we call it, uh, you can call it compound sentence, all right? So I see a deer. So from here is actually number sentence number two. I saw a deer, all right? And this sentence is overlaps. Okay, with number one. Okay. Number one is a deer killed by a huntsman. I saw a deer, all right? So when I saw a deer, I will be a hum. I saw, uh, here will be, instead of something I see, okay? I see, I see, a hum pasami, I see. But this deer, because it's an object here, all right? It's an object here, so, you must change the miga, migo, change it to migam, right? So migo, migo becomes migam here, right? So because miga is the object for this I, I, I see, all right? So migo, change it to migam. Hato, change it to hatam, all right? Wa via dena is also same instrumental singular. This, actually, this kind of sentence is two in one. Can you all follow? Wendy, can you follow? Can I understand that? Sorry. You're back from holiday, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're all going to have another holiday coming soon. Okay. Right. So this, this thing is you need to, so every time if you see this kind of sentence, first you try to think in English and try to break the sentence to two, right? I see a deer, first one. The deer killed by a huntsman, two, right? So first sentence, so, so you can see, all right? Sentence number two will be, I... Okay. A deer was killed by this number one. I see a deer. So I see a deer killed by Hans man. So this one me go change to me gum. Hato change to hatam. And va viadena also same. Alright. So if you want to draw a line, so for those doing uh, next time when you learn again, so you can just literally draw a line like this. Okay, this one from here to here. Then this. This one from here to here. Okay, so you got two different Bali sentences and two different English sentences. All right. All right, questions?
Okay. No question, we continue. So this sentence you will get in the here, I think. Yeah. Biadena hatam mikam aham basami. So if you just write like that, so it will take some time for you to think about passive past, but it's a way is it? All right. So now when we look at that, where is the passive past? Uh, this one? So this one, all right. So this one is called PPP. So PPP, all right. Passive past participle. Because even like here, this is already PPP. This is also passive past participle, but only because me go here, but here you become me gum. But anyway, you just made it's two sentences in one, two in one, right? Because you cannot put me go because the subject is aham, right? You cannot put me go. Me go must be me gum. Me gum is an object to the aham. So in terms of this one will be I'm saying instrumental singular. So this one will be I'm saying ob no. Acquisition singular, so I mean, acquisition singular. Aham will be the subject here, all right? Basami is a verb, all right? Now, this is easy, this is much more easy to answer. So, without object, so means we call it intransitive, without object. So, PP is a subject complement, all right? For example, what is subject complement? Subject and complement. All right. So why is this intransitive? Intransitive word means a word that does not require any object to complete the sense. For example, subject is manus manuso human. Subject complement will be gato has gone or tito has stood. So a human here we know is a one human. Okay, a human has gone, has stood. You don't need any object. No object at all. So we call it, uh, it technically quite intransitive, but it's just the meaning is there's no need any object. So another one, all right? And masculine normally singular, and this is masculine normally singular. This one is easy to understand. The subject, manuso, subject, subject complement. Another one is luco patito. A tree, we saw this at just now. A tree, a tree, okay, we don't know which, okay. A tree fell down or a tree has fallen, had fallen, all right. No need object. All right, okay. Now, we look at the, this is also interesting. So, when you do the translation of Sutta, at least you need to know how are you going to translate from Bali to English. For example, past participle, you can translate in past tense, present perfect, past perfect. I already mentioned just now, all right? Like, puriso agato. The man came. So it's a past tense. Or you want to translate as present perfect with the hoti or without the hoti also can. So this hoti is optional. So you can do it this way. All right? Or you just put without hoti or this one with the hoti. So the first one is the man came. So Puriso Agato, Puriso Agato Hoti Sam, the man has come. So that means that with this Agato, you can translate as past tense or present perfect. Or you want to translate as past perfect also can. So Puriso Agato. Or if you want to put, you can put the this uh, acid, all right? But agato or agato acid, the man had come. So this definitely, if you put the acid, definitely had come. It's a past perfect. All right, without hoti, it's a past perfect. With hoti, it's a present perfect. I already mentioned just now already, okay? So this means that past, past, uh, perf past uh, PP, past participle, you can translate as past tense, present perfect, Past perfect. Same, we see the Puriso Agato, the man came. 
Purisa Ag Puriso Agato, the man has come. Puriso Agato, the man had come. All right, I already uh, just now mentioned already. Or if you want to translate in the, like just now, okay, the Luka. You can translate in a passive way. The tree will cut down. So Luka, Chinna, Purisehi. Luka is the tree. So the trees, many trees, okay? The trees were cut down by men. Luka china prisehi. So you can translate as a passive sentence. Or prisehi by men, china were cut luka tree. All right, so, so tree were cut. All right, so this means that we can translate in this way, all right? Past tense, present perfect, past perfect, or this passive past tense, like just now we already see a few examples. Or if you want to translate the same sentence, you can use as a passive perfect, present perfect, have been cut down, or passive past perfect, had been cut down, all right? So... Instead of word cut down, you same sentence. Purisehi luka china. Purisehi by the man luka tree. You can translate. Instead of word cut down, you can put have been cut down or had been cut down. So that's why past participle is very interesting because you can translate in various way depend on the uh, situation at that time. Okay. All right. This is another one. Past participle. Agato and you put the hutwa. So when you put the agato with the hutwa, it becomes agachitwa. All right. Agachitwa is a gerund. Okay. Or oh, agato or oh, agato hutwa. Either with the hutwa or with the hutwa. So for example, this is another example. Anyway, I pass the note to you, or you can read it and digest it. So, he, Agato, having come here, means that this the first action takes place. This way is same like Jaron. Means that uh, here take in a in a sense of the first action occur first, okay? Occurs. So he From the monastery, Ida, here, okay, having come, right, having come, means that he came from the monastery, you see this center in Bali, amazing, now, there, lies, sleep or lie down. So, in a sense, even though it's Agato, but this Agato happened before the Sayati. So here is, you have two verbs here. This is a verb number one and verb number two. So in the sense, this agato, past participle, it actually takes parts like gerund, right? Behave like gerund. So you can translate, he having come here from the monastery, now lies down there. Or you can translate in the... This means that this action happened first. So he came from came here from the monastery and now lies down there. So it means that he came from the monastery first and sleep now. Okay. So this one we call Jared. So this means that in this sense, past participle, you can translate many ways, right? So I just repeat again. So past tense, present perfect, past perfect, past tense, present perfect, past perfect, passive, past tense, or passive, present perfect, or passive, past perfect, gerund, all right? Okay. Now, I think this one I will pass to you all, you all read again, all right? Because... It's better I finish all at one time. So later you all study by yourself. All right. 
Now we call it syntax. Syntax is how things combine to form a larger unit, such as phrases and sentences. Like you can see, agato pas participle. It take part as a verb, like we mentioned just now. Puriso agato. The man came, has come, had come. So agato is a pp. Luko patito. A tree fell, has fell, or had fallen down. Okay. So it's also, this is a different verb. But sometimes, past participle take the place as a noun. Like budo tatagato. Actually, budo tatagato is a past participle by itself. Okay. How you get Buddha? Bud to awaken to uh what's another? To a no? Yeah. Plus the ta. So become Buddha. Okay. Tatagata is same. The word ta ta plus gata. Okay. So they call it Tas gone. You know? In Chinese, you call it lu lai. Oh, lu is a uh, uh, in this way. Lu chi. Oh, that's uh, tata gata. Or another one is ta ta. Sorry, ta. Agata, all right. So, Tascon. That's how we address the Buddha. The Buddha came. Buddha, like we call it the Buddha, came in the tradition of the previous Buddha, all right. And the Buddha will gone, gone the way he followed the noble effort path. Okay. Follow the path of the previous Buddha. But Chaiji, the, the yeah, the the last one that the, the first comma, the Agatha, the should be long a right, the uh, oh yeah sorry yeah okay Agatha right, Tata Gata Tata Agatha Taskon Taskam. In Chinese, we call it Lu Lai, follow the Tata Agata. All right. Okay, so this means that Buddha, Tata Gato, is a past participle. But this past of this, it takes place as a noun. It, it, like in above is a Puriso Agato, it's a verb. Luko Patito. All right. So Agato. So this one is PP here. But here, as a noun, budo tadagato is a past participle itself, take play as a noun, so agachati. So the, the just translate is the, the, the Buddha or Tasgon comes. All right. So any question on this? Oh, okay, so no question, so I'll continue. Now, adjective, right? How are you going to use the PP as adjective here? Okay. Either here, came, right? Or has come, man. Hoti is, all right? So, Ida, agato, puriso, hoti. Right. So, Ida is here. A man came or come, puriso is. So, if you translate this, you say, there is a man who has come here. This is come or uh, maybe has come here. Yeah. Okay, so you you have to put the word there, all right? There, because normally in English grammar, when you introduce a subject for the first time, you can use there, 
or it is there is a man and this agato take the place of noun okay here is a place so agato is an adjective modified to the noun and this is a verb so past participle there is a man this is we call it direct translation right so if you're going to direct translation there is a man because it's adjective here so you have to write the word who there's a man who has come here right but if you're going to write like this you can put another way all right indirect way or another way or we translate so the meaning is very clear he has come here all right somebody uh he a man all right so a man has come here Any question? How about Sumita? Very quiet today. I can, can understand. Thank you, Saji. Oh, yeah. I think you listened before, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Can follow. Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is another example. Now, why do we know it's adjective, right? Because you can see. For example, is if a verb we put after the noun, okay? So through call here is a noun, so this is a is a verb, so it's also a PP here. So when you put the past participle after the noun, so it's a verb here, okay? But for the adjective, we always put okay. Adjective we have to put before the noun. Normally, I would say normally. Okay, so it's a word here. So, fallen tree is all right. So you can translate in this way: there is a fallen tree, because in the sense of it's an adjective by itself. There's a fallen tree, right? Or the meaning is very simple: a tree has fallen down. So here, this is a past participle. Now, this past participle, it takes the place of adjective. So, patito, luco, hoti. So, part plus ita, patita. Right? I think this is also easy. Now, next example. So, this is a sup plus ta, suda. So, for example, I think you know some of the monks, Visuddha, all right? Visuddho or Visuddha or Visuddhi Maga, coming from this word Suddha, all right? Suddha means pure. So, it's adjective modified to this noun, right? In terms of grammar, this is a PP, right? So, even in adjective, it must be same like just now. It must be follow the masculine nominee singular. So here must be masculine nominee singular. Qualify to the uh the past participle must modify qualify to the noun. So the man, the pure man. Okay, the pure man comes or oh, very easy. This is a very simple sentence. So the pure man is a, this pure it actually is a past participle, but it's actually is an adjective, all right? Two in one, all right? Now, so it must be modified, but if you put some is object here, it with a nasal consonant, so it cannot be agato, it must be agatam, all right? So ida is a place here, agatam. I think you know it came or came Purisa, a man. So it's a place here. An adjective must modify to the Purisam. So is Purisam is the so this must be masculine acquisitive singular. Masculine acquisitive singular. 
right? So agatam purisam. I saw a man. Uh, I see. Okay, she'll be singular. Sorry. I see. I see a man who has, who came, has come, or had come here. All right. Now, Jenny, you can see. Jenny? Now, yes, in this sense, what do you think is the best sentence? So, because you can see, you, we had three choices here. So, according to this sense, which one do you think is the best sentence? Uh, I see a man who Either has come or had come here. But you you see now, I see. I see means it's a current current things taking place, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So the man should be in front of me, right? Yeah. So, All right. So. So past ten is is not possible, so right? Past present, so we did yeah, it. The yeah, past ten yeah. should be present perfect. I see okay? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So you can see how we change the past participle to the English meaning according to the context. Mm. All right. Yeah. Because okay. you can see, I see, I see must be somebody in front of me, right? Mm. If the person not in front of me, I cannot say I see, mm. and it must be here exactly at this moment at this time. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Okay, next one. So, puliso. Now, okay, this is also another demand, all right? So, this is a noun. This is adjective, all right? Now, you can see the adjective in normal, here, like here, the adjective is in front of the man. Agatam purisam. But here, adjective is taking place. Uh, I think this one we call it, that's how we call it, predicate, right? Yeah, predicate, yeah. A subject complement also can, all right? So, this is a subject and this is a subject complement. So, the man is heedless or means that without mindfulness. So, pa, pa, mla, and ta. So, this is a adjective. So, the man is heedless, subject complement. So, this is another way we can write also. Okay, so let me finish the last one before you all get so... Uh, because it's good to learn at one time all the possibility, right? So later we can, you all can read and digest by yourself, okay? Adverb with the hutua. This is a long sentence, but it's good. Uh, this one I think I get from the Tibitaka. Okay. So. Sako. Sako, you know, the Saka king. Saka is a king here. The Saka, okay, may just king. And then the Dibba deity, Sampatiya, prosperity of deity, Pamato. Okay, like the example just now. Yeah, this Pamato. Hitler's Hutwa. It has a Hutwa here, having. Having become, having become Hitler's, all right? So you start from here, Pamato Hutwa. So you can break here. Having become healers by the divine prosperity, the Saka, the Saka king, we kept um, become akase, so became confused. So here with the hutwa, the this pamato, which is a pp here. So the subject here, all right, this instrumental. So this is a PP with a, this gerund. So when the PP past participle with the hutwa here, it become adverb. The sentence become adverb. Having become heedless by the divine prosperity, the saka became confused. You you can take it as adverb modified to the verb. Uh, became confused. All right. So other thing, when we say pamato past participle with the hutwa. So actually you combine become pamajitwa. So pamato hutwa with the gerund become pamajitwa. Pamajitwa is also gerund, right? So this means that when you have the PP, you plus the hutwa gerund. So it become the gerund itself, okay? So you can get this pa plus ma plus yeah 
plus itua, all right? Pamajitua. Uh, this is not so important for, for the basic student, but it's good to learn all the possibility because uh, so for me, when I learn things, I try to get the overall view, so it's better. Sorry, sorry, but this an, yes? Can I ask a question? If you go About back just to now? just now, yeah. The, okay. The, can you go up a bit? Up, up, up a bit. Ah, okay, here. The we can pump, this is in accusative case, right? Yes. Because it's, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, when we want to describe something, we can use the accusative case, uh, even though the sakta is in nominative case. Is, is that uh, because it's to do with agasi? Agasi means we did. Come, uh, did uh, we kappa, uh, you can say, uh, oh, what's another meaning of the car? Distorted or confused, okay. Hmm. In a it's way, right. if direct translation will be did confused. But if you put the confused very wrong, so it became confused is better. All right. So is because confused is like a, a state yeah, of right. mind, right? Yes. So we can put it as accusative case. Is that how we Yeah, uh, right, right. Yeah. Actually not to do with the confused, it's to do with the this word did. It's an action by itself. You did homework, you did something. So when you did something, then it must be object here, right? Can oh, you follow me? Oh. Yeah. For, for example, you, even the word akasi, you can see akasi to do with like building a house or do something. There must be an object. So if the whole sentence, you cannot find the object, I said this with kepam, right? Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, all right. We kepa. We kepa is normally used, for example, your mind is a, uh, uh, yeah, distorted or... I think the another way is called throw throw out. Okay, but yeah. Messy. Yeah, the confusion, derangement, disturbance became yeah, yeah dialect will be confusion, right? Confusion, yeah. But if you say did confusion so we translate became confused, which is a better translation. Okay. Hmm? Where's the mouse? Oh, anyway, this is not so important for the best student. So let me finish this the last one, okay? So so I am this logo disease. So when you see the O, normally it's a masculine, so you just put masculine. Dicto, seen. When this disease has been seen, So, masculine normally, sorry, so where is the cursor go? He, uh, we hesa is a feminine, all right. He, hoti. So, anyway, the key point is when this disease, sin, dicto here is sin, but you can translate as a, it's another grammar point for those intermediate students. It's a nominative absolute. When it's a nominative case, when nominative case, you use it as a uh, timing, use the word when. So uh, this is another one. So nominative with the uh, when or war. So you can translate with the timing, sense of timing. So this kind of grammar we call it nominative as a look, all right? Something that for basic student for you to learn, all right? So when Nominative dicto, when this disease, so, so I am logo, has been seen. So, indicate this is a, it will be same PPP because it's a passive sentence. So, you know, it's a PPP. He was worried, means that he seen this disease, or maybe doctor seen the disease or somebody. But this one, number five, this grammar number five is not important yet. Okay, number four also not so important, this grammar point. The more important point will be on the, at least you all must know. Okay, different verbs, different noun. The past participle act as a verb, past participle become a noun here. The, this is more important. Past participle become a 
active sentence. Uh, it's an adjective here. Right? Okay, I, I will pass to you all to read and then uh, you all can, can uh, continue. All right, so let me go for the... We, we just do some, not going to finish all. There are many, uh, how many? I think 54 or 55 uh, verbs here. But it's important to learn, okay? Even in my university, so lesson 15 is compulsory for diploma. Okay? You can see here the book already given the root A plus gam agachati. Apa plus gam apagachati apagata. Right? A plus ni an, aneti anita. Okay. So we just try few first. The last time I covered with the with the intermediate student. So it's good revision for you all. So here remember gum always change it to ga. Right? A plus gum become ga. So when the root to you need to write the meaning of root, you put in bracket and then I use the word to to go. Gum is agam agachati. Agachati comes. Alright? So how do you get the comes? A plus gum, gum change your ga, change your a and t. So agachati. So past participle we a gum agata. How do you know agata? A with the first root gum and ta. Alright? Then you just show elation. Or if you want to write in English, elation or M, agata. I think this is easy for you all. Apa. Now, it's same thing. Here is the prefix a. This is apa. So the prefix a and apa has different meaning. All right. Apa has the meaning of uh, back or away. I think apa is the meaning of away. Okay. Apa gachati goes away. So apa is by glam. Plus a and t. So apa gata? Apa plus gum delete the m and ta. Okay. Apa gata? Gone away. So came and gone away. Different meaning because of the root a and apa. Right. These two. And then you got another one. The present is aneti. How you get anity? The root is ni. Alright, so a plus ni. So a plus ni, and then uh, this ni change it to a also can. Alright. Or another one is uh, if you don't want to change it, you can change the n. n plus Ni plus a change it to ne, all right? Then it plus the t, all right? So you got ne t, right? I think this is enough. I think we we stop here. So I think it's is too much grammar, also not good, all right? So let me stop. Okay. All right. I think we just leave it like that. So I will pass it for the basic student for you all to see again. Because uh, past participle is very important. This I will say, the past participle is the last lesson which I will cover it in two or three or four before we stop for the your all presentation. All right, but it must be very important. I will tell, I emphasize is that it's very good to understand it because once you understand past participle, you will find that you understand the grammar in many sutta. All right, when you see many sutta, you find a lot. of that kind of grammar, which it doesn't look like a uh, simple present tense or past tense or future tense. It's actually similar to this kind of past participle. Okay. So, all right. I think we so uh, later I'll pass it to you. Okay. So we just uh, have a, a short uh, sharing of merits. 
because uh, actually I'm quite tired. But actually, if anybody want to good share for us, it's very good. Anybody good in chanting? Uh? <laughs> you ask you. Uh, Doris? I think Doris. Doris? Yeah. Are you? Can you lead the chanting? Because I'm tired already in my voice. I can, but to say the words, I'm not so good. Oh, it doesn't matter. Any words? Yeah. Can you open your video? Yeah. Video. All right. Okay. Uh, so what should I say? Okay, <laughs> back. One second, one second. Let me take this one. Just one second, one second. Okay. The chanting. <laughs> Okay. Okay. What should I say for the thing? Uh, I think we should be for the past an hour and a half. We have learned good lessons from Sayaji, and now we like to give some merits to. To, to our devas, to our being seen and unseen. And I would like to chant some uh, chanting of transfer of merits. Is it okay? Jai okay, Ji? okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Akasatta Jabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyan Tam Anumoditwa Chiram Rakhan to Lokasa Sanang Akasatta Jabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyantang Anumoditwa Jiram Rakhantu Dhamma De Sanang Akka Satta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahitika Punyantang Anumoditwa Jiram Rakhantu Mamparang Let us give some merits. Eta vata cha am hehi, sambadang punya sampadang, sabbe deva anumodantu, sabbe sampati siddhya. Eta vata cha am hehi, sambadang punya sampadang, sabbe buta anumodantu, sabbe sampati siddhya. Eta vata cha am hehi, sambadang punya sambadang, sabbe satta anumodantu, sabbe sampati siddhya. Let us give uh, the merits to the departed one. Idang me nya tinang ho tu, sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idang me nya tinang ho tu, sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idang me nya ti nang ho tu, sukita ho tu nya tayo, and our aspiration. Ipmina punya kame na, ma me bala sama gamo, satang sama gamo ho tu, ya wanit ba na patia. Okay. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, thank you very much. All right. So let us put our hand and say Buddha Sasana Chirantitato. Okay. Buddha Sasana Chirantitato. Buddha Sasana Chirantitato. Buddha Sasana Chirantitato. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay. Okay, join me on Friday. So Friday is another grammar on a present participle. Now this one today we learn is a past participle. So Friday is another grammar. Okay, for the newcomer, you all most welcome to join. Okay, thank you very much. See you on Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Okay.